Hello everyone, my name is Clyde, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about this little Technicolor Dream Ship right over my shoulder. This is the Almirante Grau, and you'll be able to unlock the Grau through one of Wargaming's web campaigns, in which we follow a couple of Dutch brothers around as they go on a visit to Peru. Come to think of it, I don't really know if they are brothers, and frankly, I don't think it really matters. Um, you'll be able to basically complete some missions, you'll unlock some wacky tokens, you can swap those tokens to get some random bundles. Okay. To maybe unlock the ground. And, okay. It just seems really complicated. The kids keep coughing up quarters, you know? <laughs> At this point, it's not really known if the ship will be made available for another currency later on. However, we have seen this happen with ships like Hampshire and I-56 and S-189, which all showed up in the premium shop after a month's long wait. And we've been told it will happen for the Brisbane, which is going to come to the armory for coal some number of months after its an original availability through a similar web campaign. So there is some hope that you'll just be able to buy the ship outright. The Almirante Grau is a D7 Provincian class cruiser originally built for the Dutch Navy as the HNLMS, that's a lot of letters, De Reuter. She was later sold to the Peruvian Navy in 1973 and was renamed for one of the four aces of the Peruvian Navy, Miguel Grau Seminario. In World of Warships, Grau is essentially a clone of the Dutch dockyard cruiser, the D7P, with a few minor differences. Now, one of her less minor differences is the set of combat instructions, which essentially triples her DPM for a short period of time from the main battery guns. For consumables, Grau has a damage control party, a 5km ship detection hydroacoustic search module, and a defensive AA fire module. She's also got these combat instructions, which essentially, as long as you remain hidden, can charge up, and then eventually you can unlock the combat instructions for a 66% main battery reload time buff. We'll talk more on this later. For camouflages, Almirante Grau has a couple of different options, this one of course being the most stylized of the two. Um, it's got a lot of gold trim that reflects beautifully, um, and it's got these like ancient South American style carved stone turrets, which are pretty sweet with the mouths. Um, I don't think this is gonna be a camouflage for everyone, but for those who are into this kind of style, this is a really, really cool camo. Um, and of course, it's still got the radar dish up there. It's blending the ancient with the new. Now, for those of you more interested in a traditional camouflage, she's got one of these classic rust-free grays that we've been getting from Wargaming a lot of late. You can see at the top, I've swapped out the Peruvian flag for the generic Pan-American flag. And uh, I, I think this looks pretty good for a, for a basic rust-free gray camouflage. Obviously, I like a good dazzle camo as much as the next guy, um, but in the absence of one, you know, this will do the job. This is a video in my hot take series, and if you've never seen one before, make yourself comfortable. Uh, for every one of my hot take videos, I take a look at a ship's capabilities and I compare them against her peers, ships of the same tier and class. We rate each capability on a scale of zero to five, with five being the best. At the end of every hot take, I share with you my build and I explain why I put the ship together that way. Sound simple enough? Great, let's get to work. We'll start with the guns. So for those of you who unlocked D7P in the dockyard a while back, these guns might be very familiar already. They have nice flat arcs with an initial muzzle velocity of 900 meters per second, and they've got a range of just over 16 kilometers. In nearly all attributes, the guns on Grau are identical to those on the D7P, with the exception of reload. Almirante Grau has a seven second base reload, whereas D7P has a 6.5 second reload, and that results in slightly higher DPM for D7P over Grau. On both Grau and D7P, both of the rear turrets can rotate 360 degrees. This allows you to maneuver the ship more freely with only a minimal loss of DPM as the guns can turn whatever the shortest distance is to get right back on target. The gun rotation is a relatively slow 22 and a half seconds, but you can improve that slightly with some commander skills if you decide to. The fire chance for these ships is very healthy as well at 11% before adding any signals or commander skills to boost. And I have found that the AP does really good work on broadside cruisers, so don't sleep on that either. The ship's party piece, of course, is its combat instructions. For those newer to the concept of combat instructions, it's essentially an ability that the ship has which you can activate once you've met certain requirements. Unlike a consumables module, you have to do something in order for the combat instructions to activate. You can't just wait around. For Grau, the required activity is to remain unspotted, a prospect that's made relatively easy by the ship's good concealment. More on this a bit later. 
Essentially, in exchange for going dark for 50 seconds, you're able to activate your combat instructions, which last for around 30 seconds. Actually, they last for exactly 30 seconds. During that time, your guns reload three times faster, which triples your DPM. Your AP DPM goes from just over 205k to 617k, and your HE DPM goes from over 147,000 to over 442,000 damage per minute. That's 150,000 more AP DPM than German cruiser mines, and almost 200,000 more HE DPM than the US cruiser Cleveland, both of which are the number one tier 8 cruisers for AP and HE DPM respectively. Now granted, this only lasts for about 30 seconds, after which you return to your relatively average DPM numbers and then try to find a good hiding spot so that you can do it all again after your gun bloom subsides and you've had a chance to hide out for another 50 seconds. This makes for a very unique gameplay experience and it makes the ship feel really, really powerful in these short bursts. Now, when the game first begins, you'll have a chance to charge up your combat instructions even before you establish first contact with the enemy, which means that you can surprise your first target with this huge burst of DPM. And that is incredibly fun and satisfying to do because the team never knows what side you're gonna spawn on. If you're spotted and battleship shells are incoming, you can always respond with a deluge of huge fiery HE shells, or at least a huge volume of them. Once the combat instructions are active, you'll have a chance to put out about 13 salvos of eight shells in that 30 second window. This gives you a very high probability of putting a fire on a target, or if it's a broadside cruiser, putting some citadels into their side, which is very, very, very cool. It's easy to respond to a battleship who just citadeled you for eight or 12K with an equal or greater amount of damage using a single usage of the combat instructions. And that is incredible for a light cruiser to be able to turn around and do that. It's gonna be frustrating and irritating for a battleship captain. So for you guys, I guess, I guess I'm sorry, uh, but I am not at all sorry about giving a Grau a 5 in this category. Very, very few ships are going to grab a 5 in any category when I do a hot take, but the guns on this ship are amazing and I love them and the combat instructions are so easy to activate and so powerful when you do that I can't give it any other score. Tipping the scales at just 33,800 hit points, Grau is not going to want to take too many big hits. She's 31st out of 35 cruisers when it comes to how much health she has, and she has basically no armor to speak of. Her real armor is her concealment and islands, honestly. She ranks 16th out of all 35 tier 8 cruisers when it comes to concealment. Well, that's deep into the double digits. It's not as bad as it sounds. She's not much worse than the best ship, and she is much, much, much better than the worst ship when it comes to being spotted out on the high seas. Fully built for concealment, Grau is spotted at 9.6 kilometers, and while Tone can bring her concealment down to 8.8, .8, that 9.6k is really, really usable. Uh, I'm gonna give Grau a three in this category, but just barely. Um, early in the match, your plan is gonna be to take up a defensible position behind allies and near an island that you can use to escape if you need to. Using this technique makes it easy to keep the ship alive unless you press in a little bit too close, a little too early, and you find yourself unable to escape danger as the enemy team pushes into your position. Next, we'll talk about the hydroacoustics on this ship. The only ships at tier eight in the cruiser category that have a better hydro are mines, Hipper and Prinz Eugen. Grau takes home a four in this category, and in the interest of saving time, we'll just move on and talk about our AA guns next. The Grau has the same excellent AA suite that we find on the D7P, which is easily the best anti-aircraft gun equipment that we find on any tier eight cruiser in the game. Except that Grau adds a defensive AA module, which means that this ship will shred planes like literally no other. Tier six carriers need not apply. You should not even bother to approach the El Mirante Grau because you will get nothing done and you will lose all of your planes in very, very short order. And if you're a tier eight carrier, you should be comfortable with losing a lot of planes when you choose to strike this machine. Not only is the DPS very good, but the AA on both Grau and D7P has the longest long range and the longest medium range of any cruiser at tier eight. And even though neither cruiser has a short range at all, they do not suffer from this in any way. That chunky 605 DPM at medium range, which reaches up four kilometers, means that you're gonna down more planes as they're on their way in to attack you. And that often means that you'll stiff arm the incoming attacks before the planes even have a chance to drop their ordnance. All of this makes Grau a wonderful divinate to say a tier eight destroyer. Maybe that destroyer can bring some smoke along to share that with the player in the Grau. 
Listen, I don't like to give out fives too often, and I know I just gave one out for main battery, but it is stupid easy for me to give Grau a five in the AA category. For ASW capability, Grau has over the side depth charges with a low flood chance and a middling fire chance. She drops six charges, which is a pretty average number, honestly, and her damage is on the low side. I'm giving Grau a two for ASW. With her mediocre depth charges and the lack of air dropped ASW, she relies on her excellent guns to do most of the damage she's gonna do to submarines. Unless you're at risk of being sunk, you probably won't wanna waste your combat instructions on a submarine, as doing so is probably overkill, at least when you're facing a tier six or a tier eight sub. By way of maneuverability, Grau is pretty slow and her rudder shift and turning radius are acceptable, but unremarkable. The ship's play style is of course influenced by this, but her low detection range and slow speed actually kind of work together to help you get into a position after your allied spotting ships have already gotten on station. This means that you're gonna be making those initial positioning decisions in a match after you probably already have good intel on where the enemies are located. Now, that's kind of a silver lining, and so if we set that aside for a minute, Grau is simply not that maneuverable, so she's gonna take home a two in the category of maneuverability. Is Almirante Grau easy to play? Um, yes and no. Um, Grau's combat instructions are pretty straightforward, and they require no skill to power up. Unlike Ignacio Allende and other ships from the Pan European or Pan American, excuse me, tech line, you don't have to like land shells and be in danger in order to charge the combat instructions. In fact, you need to do the exact opposite. You need to run away from danger and remain hidden. So it's easy to charge up your combat instructions. Avoiding destroyers, submarines, and radar, it's something that we all do in all classes in the game for the most part. So playing Grau is utilizing skills that you've already been practicing on other ships you're already familiar with. Hitting with her guns is pretty easy to do. The shells have excellent ballistics and she has a pretty good range, better than most ships that like to hide near islands uh, because it's over 16 kilometers. Like other light cruisers, she'll take a citadel pretty easily, but unlike a lot of light cruisers, she can go full honey badger and respond by doing 10 to 20,000 damage to a battleship in less than the time that it takes the battleship to reload its main battery. This can cause a battleship captain to panic and retreat in flames, presumably to hold down the tab key so they can right click and report you. Now, it can be very tempting for you to use your combat instructions every single time to farm easy to hit battleships for big damage numbers, but it is important that you use your powers for good and incinerate enemy destroyers as well. There's a balance that you wanna strike here though, because if you kill all the DDs way too fast, all the battleships will run away and you really don't want that. You need them to be confident enough to stay on your side and fight. Remember, you're not very fast, so if you have to chase them when they start running, you're gonna have a hard time getting it done. As I warn with every light cruiser that I do a hot take on, if you don't like light cruisers, if you can't seem to keep them alive, this might not be an easy ship for you to play, but I assure you, you can learn to do it. This ship is cool enough that if you decide to get it and you decide to learn how to play it, you'll be well rewarded. Now, you are gonna want to avoid unwanted attention. You're always gonna wanna have an escape plan and you wanna make sure that you check your surroundings before becoming spotted as you activate your combat instructions. I'm gonna rate this ship a three in the category of ease of play. If you wanna unlock that delicious nougaty combat instructions DPM, you can, but it may take a little bit of practice. And for those of you on the upper end of the skill spectrum, this ship has, I think, a very high skill ceiling. I think you can go absolutely insane to the moon with this thing. Is the Grau a fun ship to play? Yes. Yes, it is very, very, very fun. <laughs> I don't think this boat's quite as stupid fun as Palo Emilio, uh, because honestly, not much can compare with the YOLO runs that you do in that ship, but in a lot of ways, it's kind of similar. Just like in Palo, you're lurking in the shadows with a hidden ability to deal unreasonable amounts of damage in a very short period of time. When the moment is right, you reveal yourself and unleash hell on your unsuspecting enemies. Yes, when you do that, in that moment, you are very well threatened by your enemies. Uh, but if you positioned well, you should be able to do it again. And again. And maybe again. It's a little easier to repeat the feat in Grau than it is in Paolo, I think. And of course, it's also very satisfying when an enemy carrier spots you and they think, oh look, a relatively stationary or slow cruiser, and they swoop in to drop off a big pile of experience points for you. Thanks, CV. 
Listen, the ridiculously explosive nature of the combat instructions is such a neat take on a reload booster, because at the end of the day, that's all it is. To kick this off, you can't simply just wait for a cooldown. There's a second piece of the contract. That second piece, remaining unspotted, changes the way that you play this ship. And even though that change to your behavior might seem very minor, the ship feels way different to play than others. And at this point, eight years and 600 ships into the development of this video game, that is a tall order to create a ship that feels and plays actively different than other ships. Grau is easily taking a five in the fun category. I know, three in one ship, but I gotta hand it to him. Well done, Wargaming. One thing to note, of course, is that this ship to me feels relatively powerful. If its combat performance is deemed to be too high in the future, she could be adjusted by the wizards, the boffins, if you will, at Wargaming. So if you do decide to go for the ship, bear that in mind. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily gonna get nerfed because its regular DPM isn't that out of the ordinary, but its combat instructions DPM is pretty juicy. So just bear that in mind and know that as we think about whether or not it's worth pushing for the ship, especially given the weird random bundles method that they've made the ship available to us. And of course, our last category as always is competitive. Will we see the Grau being used in competitive modes? Maybe, um, I, <laughs> I almost always say no for every ship that's brought into this, but let's talk about this one. I think the Grau is a good ship and I think she's powerful, but I think she's got a lot of really good and really established competition. Let's talk about Mines, one of the best DPM cruisers at tier eight. Yes, Mines doesn't have a heal, but neither does Grau. Mines has better uh, hydros as well, and she's got more gun range. So it'd be difficult to choose Grau over Mines, which has a more consistently high DPM rather than Grau's more uh, situational or um, occasional high DPM. Chapayev is a really great light cruiser that's at tier eight. Again, no heal, but it's got radar. It's got much longer range. It's got um, it's got uh, flat ballistics as well, similar to Grau's. So Chappie is a great ship for doing all the same things that Ch uh, the Grau does, but at greater range and bringing along a 12 kilometer radar. So it's gonna be hard to not choose Chappie going into a tier eight competitive tournament or something like that. I'm gonna give Grau a two for competitive. I think you could have a lot of fun with this ship in a competitive scenario, but I just don't know that I think it's gonna unseat the reigning DPM cruiser champions that are currently in the competitive space at tier eight. For my commander build, I've gone with Grease the Gears. This helps my main battery rotate my turrets a little bit faster. I said earlier they're 22 and a half seconds. Base mine rotate 180 degrees in 19.6 seconds. I went with Demolition Expert to give me an extra percentage point of fire damage. Add a couple of signals to this, and that pushes my fire chance up to 13% in my build. I've gone with Consumables Enhancements to make the duration of my Hydroacoustic Search run longer. I don't know how critical this is, but I like this. I like having my Hydros run as long as possible. Um, your mileage, of course, may vary. Focus Fire Training improves our AA capabilities. Uh, survivability Expert adds more hit points. We talked about how this is kind of a lightweight in terms of hit points, and this gives me an extra 450 HP per tier, which I like. Adrenaline Rush gives me a little more DPM as I take damage and we expect and know that this is gonna happen throughout the battle. In order to keep myself hidden so that I can charge up my combat instructions, I take Concealment Expert. It's part of the recipe of what brings us down to 9.6 kilometers in terms of detection range. And then finally, I have top grade gunner, and I don't know actually if I really need this skill. This basically improves your reload time when there are ships within your uh, base detection range. For me, 9.6 kilometers. So this only activates sometimes when I'm already in extreme danger, and I guess in that case it'd be kind of nice. Something I've been thinking about switching to is radio location. If I want to stay hidden and this tells me which direction the nearest unspotted ship is, that's going to help me be able to avoid that ship to stay hidden. I don't feel like I have a lot of hard times getting my combat instructions to activate, but I could see a player wanting to lean on radio location instead of top grade gunner, and I certainly encourage you to experiment and find out what works best for you. For my upgrades for the Grau, we've gone with main armaments modification number one in the first slot. In slot two, I went with a premium or a coal hydro acoustic search module. I've actually kind of considered trying out the def AA module, although I haven't done it yet, but I find that I do swat a lot of planes in this thing, and if I could have longer turbo AA and less cooldown time, this would be really slick to have. If I wasn't gonna go with one of these premium modules that cost coal, I'd go with engine room protection. In the third slot, I've gone with aiming systems modification to make me as accurate as possible. 
Uh, and then I've gone with steering gears in slot four. You could go with propulsion modification, but honestly, I think the rudder shift improvement is worth more to you, especially if you wind up in a situation where you've got to run away from the enemy um, and you need to juke, dance, and dodge incoming shells. Obviously, for slot five, this ship's uh, combat destructions are based around being concealed, and so I think concealment modification here is pretty much the only choice you can choose to make. And again, as we've mentioned before, that's part of how we get down to 9.6 kilometers. Well, that's it, folks. That's the video on the Almirante Grau. What do you guys think? Is this a ship you want to add to your port? Obviously, I think it was easy for you to tell that I am a huge Grau fanboy. And so I hope that many of you are able to see it in your first bundle in the random bundles thing. Um, while it's disappointing that the ship isn't just available for regular sale, hopefully it will be in the future. If you're interested in this ship, I'd love to know down below in the comments what you think the coolest attributes of the ship are, what tempts you to look into it. If you're not interested in the ship, of course, I'm curious about that too. Why not? Is it not for you? Are you just not a fan of the F buttons? Or maybe you're a Battleship fan and you don't want to be burned to a crisp by yet another HE slinger. All that said, thanks a ton for watching. I hope you guys had a fantastic time. If you enjoyed this, you'd probably enjoy our live show as well. You can hang out with us live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Clyde If that's not your scene, we'll be back with another YouTube video, hopefully soon-ish. And uh, of course, we can always hang out on the Discord. I'll have a link for you to join the Discord where I actively participate in conversations in there each week. It's a cool little place with over 400 members, and we'd love to have you join us there and uh, get to chatting when we keep the conversation going between streams, videos, and I guess tweets. I'm also on Twitter. Anyway, with all that said, thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next battle. Take care, be cool, be nice, and we will see you out there. Bye, guys. Sixty degrees, which allows you to a battleship captain to panic and turn away, wearing three new brightly flaming hats. Uh, I don't like this hats joke. This is a dumb joke. And in today's video, we are going to be. What are we going to do? I don't remember what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the growl. That's the boat. We're going to talk about it.